So James chapter one, and I'm gonna pick up in verse 21, read for a few verses, and then we're gonna unpack this a little bit. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and has continued in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an active doer. This person will be blessed in what he does. Now, I know that's something we've heard in the past, I'm sure. Um, you've been around church for any amount of time. And I happened to be reading that passage this week, and the Lord started speaking speaking to me about identity and tying these two things together. And, I, and I, I was very struck by kind of what I felt like he was showing me, which I thought was really rich and I wanted to share with you. The, um, the, the Greek word in this passage that's translated word, right? When a man looks at the word and becoming a, hear, not a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word, all that, right? Every time you see the word in this passage, uh, the, the Greek word that that's translated from is the word logos. It's, it's not the word graphe. It's not the word that the scriptures use for the scripture. It's the word logos. And the word logos is a, is a spoken word. It's a, the expressed word. Uh, in fact, if you go all the way back to the Gospel of John, John, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God in the beginning. And, and he's referring to, to the eternal Son, the eternal Word, Jesus. And that word there is logos, expression. Jesus is literally the expression. And Paul picks that theme up, uh, I believe it's in Colossians, where he says that he's the image of the invisible God. He's the, he's the icon, the very icon of the Godhead. But anyway, this word here is word, it's the expression. And so God was speaking to me about this and I was, I was just meditating on this and I thought, this is really interesting because identity, your identity in Christ is all about the declaration of God. It's all about the expression of God about who he is and about who you are in him. It's all about what God says about who you are and about who he is and about who you are relative to who he is. I also found it interesting that he says, he says this here, he says, prove yourselves, but prove yourselves, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. And that word prove means to become. It means to become. Become, line up, be, be hearers, be hearers of the word. The word what? The declaration of God. The declaration of God about who you are in him, who you are in Christ. And then he goes on to wrap this up and he says, but, talking about this man who looks himself in the mirror and walks away, and he immediately forgets what kind of, what kind of person he is. See, this word, this word literally defines what kind of person you truly are in Christ. This word of God, this declaration of God, what he says about you literally defines what kind of person you truly are. Now, again, as I mentioned, we've all got natural 
characteristics or maybe even tendencies or maybe even, maybe even there's areas of brokenness that you're walking out in your life. I know there's a lot of areas of brokenness that I'm walking out in my life. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things that define who I am in Christ. And that definition is only good. It's only good. Who I am in Christ is only free. Who I am in Christ is only redeemed. Who I am in Christ is only a son. Who I am in Christ is only love, light, life. See, I'm not saying that I always act in alignment with that, I'd be lying to you. I don't. I don't. But see, what happens is when I don't, when I, when, I, when I partner with sin, when I partner with the flesh, whatever it is, I'm literally acting in opposition to my true identity. I wrote this. I want to read this to you. Um, Because I think it sums up what I'm trying to say. And then we'll drill down a little bit deeper. But to live in our identity is to agree with God's declaration over us and to align our perception of who we are with who he says we are in him. By his grace, his life being activated in us and through us, causing us to noticeably live in ways contrary to the flesh, the world, and the powers of darkness, representing him in the earth.